Hello, hello, I'm Juliana Hefford, the plant-based dietitian, and this is a What Would Juliana Do Q&A. I recently posted a video on reasons I recommend ditching dairy, and that inspired a cascade of questions about soy and phytoestrogens. So I thought I would address all of those questions here in one little video. Phytoestrogens are basically plant-derived estrogen-like compounds that are found in things like berries and grains and seeds, especially flax seeds but they're also found predominantly in soybeans and soy foods. Now, the category of phytoestrogens that you hear most often studied in the literature are called isoflavones. So what's important to remember about phytoestrogens is they are, although they are similar to estrogens, they are not estrogens. In fact, if you, what's so interesting to me is that people that are often asking about this are people that are very comfortable consuming dairy. Dairy actually has estradiol, which is the same as the hormones in humans. So that is why dairy is hormonally active, but phytoestrogens is not. So then the fear comes about with cancer risk, and that's what I hear a lot of people asking about. I got a lot of questions about that. Well, even the American Cancer Association and everyone kind of has concluded, because based on the research, that not only is soy safe for breast cancer patients or prostate cancer patients, but it has actually been shown to reduce recurrence of breast cancer in breast cancer survivors and reduce mortality in breast cancer survivors. Interestingly too, young ladies, young girls that consume soy growing up on a regular basis are at a decreased risk for getting breast cancer in the long run. Prostate cancer risk is decreased as well. So, and if you look at the countries, if you look at some of the epidemiological data, those countries that consume soy, that historically, like in Asia, parts of Asia, they have reduced incidence of these different types of cancers as well. So, what does that mean? That means you can consume some soy. I also like to warn people, it's not like you go plant-based and you have to eat soy like you're trying to replace meat we don't need to do that bite for any reason we're not trying to just swap in a hunk of tofu for a hunk of beef or a hunk of tempeh instead of you know a chicken breast it doesn't work like that we don't need soy for any particular reason but it is a really nutritious and delicious and culinarily diverse food so it's fine to incorporate it into your diet but you don't have to and you don't have to get a certain amount so what is a moderate amount? Basically, the American Cancer Society guidelines are about two servings a day. And what's a serving? Uh, it depends on what kind of thing. So one serving would be about a third a cup of tofu, a cup of soy milk, a half a cup of edamame, those soybeans, or they also include um, an ounce of soy nuts, but I don't include that as a whole food, really. I would prefer the other versions of it. So that's it. You can absolutely incorporate a little bit of soy into your diet. You don't have to. It doesn't decrease uh, fertility. It's not associated with anything really negative in humans in an abundance of evidence that's out there. So you can feel pretty safe enjoying soy foods. I know I do. I love them. Unless you're allergic to them. That's a whole other concept. But we, we're not talking about allergies here. We're talking about health risk. And it's a wonderful health promoting food. By the way, also a wonderful source of omega-3 fatty acids, some good essential amino acids. It's a wonderful substantial food. And by the way, culinarily speaking, soy milk is really creamy. So it's good in certain recipes that you want a kind of creamy texture. I use it all the time, so and I recommend it to my clients too. But again, you don't need it, but you don't have to feel at risk or worried about it. I'm much more worried about the adverse health effects of dairy, and those are absolutely well substantiated in the literature to be in association with all sorts of negative health sequelae. So you could watch my video on reasons to ditch dairy, and I go into that further there. So I hope that answers some of your questions. Please keep your wonderful questions and comments coming in the comments section below via direct message or my website, plantbaseddietitian.com. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time.